Okay guys, welcome to this episode the, of how to build your barn, how to build your post and beam barn series. This, uh, in this episode we're going to be covering how to set a post and uh, right off the bat here you can see um, what we have here is, is, is a man in the basket of this man lift and a man on the ground helping to guide the the post to its location. Um, I will make a note about safety here. Um, this kind of operation I, I don't recommend for the uh, um, for the uh, a novice uh, kind of worker. I would recommend you know someone if, if you're going to tackle it this way um, that you be an experienced operator in the man lift and experience operating below because this beam uh, could in fact you know if it it comes up it could um, injure the operator or it could uh, uh, get jammed into the basket and cause a uh, out of balance situation and you know in worst case scenario would be it, it could cause the uh, machine to tip over so I don't recommend doing it this way uh, safely, but well, I'll let you guys be the judge of your own actions. Um, so just just with that one caveat, this is not a recommended procedure of setting a post. Um, but Tim felt confident. Tim is the man in the basket. He felt confident that he can handle it. So that's what he did. Um, I trust every grown man to make uh, his own decisions about what he feels safe doing and what he doesn't. So at any rate, uh, with the safety message over, we will continue on. Uh, you could imagine that this machine, instead of being a basket at the end, was a, a telescoping forklift. And you would handle this situation the same way. Um, we use the, on this particular project. We use the T plate as a uh, catch for the strap uh, because we had more weight on this end. It was pretty balanced, but we had more weight on this end. And generally, that's going to be the way it is with most of our barn plans. The T plate is going to favor the top of the post, which works out really well um, when you're lifting it into place because the bottom of the post will naturally hang down. Okay guys, they're going to be running this. This post is going to set into this bracket right here. Uh, so if you watch them come in to the barn, Tim, uh, or Scott, is going to uh, hand the uh, top of the post up to Tim so that he can kind of hold the top of the post while he maneuvers the machine, the machine in towards the barn. But he's, first he needs to get a little bit more height so that the beam will uh, naturally want to swing into its correct place. Tim's gonna or Scott's gonna get out of the way <laughs> under the advisement of Tim, and uh, uh, Scott is going to uh, uh, is going to help to guide the bottom of the post into the U bracket. So you can see Tim has that post almost completely straight up and down at this point. He's going to hold it with one hand, um, which you could tie it off here at this point. Um, and then uh, he's going to bring that into uh, to set into the U-bracket. Now you can see uh, Tim has it all the way up to Scott and he's going to lower it down slowly and Scott's going to guide it right into that U-bracket. And uh, kind of level it up and then um, once it's correct it's uh, placed in the correct position um, Scott will be well I don't have a good picture of it yeah um, yep. it's gonna kind of bump it into place and he'll check it for level and they'll get it secured 
what they'll do is they'll secure it with screws and bolts before the basket is untied from the post. Now I want to make note of something. I get a lot of questions about this. This right here is a block of treated wood that we placed under these posts um, for this particular situation because this customer didn't want to pour the floor before the barn was built. So, um, but they did want to pour the board, the floor afterwards. So we put this spacer in here to keep the post up out of the concrete because the concrete's going to be filled up to four inches thick. Um, so what what we did is we put these in here. These are chunks of four by six with a uh, five quarter by six board on top and then once uh, once they get ready to pour the concrete once they got ready to pour the concrete they just knock these out and then uh, pour the concrete underneath the posts um, it's not really the way I would recommend doing it I have uh, another um, technique that I would recommend and uh, that is in the other the U bracket installation video where you'll you see uh, well just hang on I'll I'll grab that picture and uh, show you what that looks like okay here's the picture of uh, or the uh, 3d model of what I recommend uh, on this type of situation um, I explained this in the U bracket video but real quickly we'll go over it this here is the U bracket and um, it is installed on top of the concrete pier and then um, there is a false so this is a special U bracket it costs five dollars more than the others but there is a kind of a false floor and there will be a second hole drilled in here uh, it's not pictured but there will be one for two bolts to attach this bracket to the post um, but uh, this kind of allows you to bolt the U-bracket to the pier and then come in and pour the concrete later. Uh, these are pieces of re-rod re um, that uh, you know can go can be uh, installed uh, through holes in the bottom of the U-bracket so that uh, to just give it that extra um, stability um, and uh, uh, holding pressure, holding power. So, but anyway, that's the recommended um, installation if you're going to pour the concrete pier and the concrete floor in two separate pours. Now, if you pour it all at once, of course, you would just install your bracket on the top of the concrete pad over the concrete pier because these two items are linked together with, with re-rod going through there. So... Um, but anyway, just a couple of op uh, different alternatives uh, when you're installing uh, your U-brackets. Okay, Scott's going to get this uh, post all lined up. You can see it's tipping that way quite a bit, so Tim has to swing the top of the beam around. Oh, and then uh, you can see there's plenty of wiggle room, uh, but once these tighten up on, uh, on that post, they are tight. Uh, Scott's going to check for level, or for plumb, and see if our uh, get it set. And then he's going to he's going to uh, screw it in and bolt it down. Okay, here here Scott and I are measuring the post to make sure it's in the correct position. Um, and then uh, once we do, we'll confirm that it's plumb, and then we'll attach the hardware. Okay, you can see uh, we needed it to be at a certain measurement, and it wasn't quite where we needed it. We needed it to be 10 feet to the edge of that post. So we're just going to use a large or a, a small sledge to kind of tap it into place. You don't want to uh, bang on these posts real hard because you're going to dent them. But um, a couple of a small taps um, is just fine. Then here you can see we're confirming that it's level, or confirming that it's plumb, uh, and fine-tuning that. We want to make sure the, the these posts are as 
as plumb as you can get them as they can possibly be sometimes they're going to be a little bit you know the post will be a little bit bowed or, or one way or another um, it's best to try to get as straight a post as possible but you can work with a little bit of a crown or bow um, just got to be aware of it when you're setting it setting your post to level to to plumb I should say okay here you can see Scott is going to be um, putting in the uh, temporary mounting screws there are quarter inch holes in the sides of these U brackets that allow you to put a screw in to the post to hold that post in its correct position while you're working on uh, uh, drilling out the uh, uh, the holes for the half inch bolts that go all the way through the bracket and the post and bolt on the other side. Okay, you can see here Scott has a 18 volt drill with a uh, half inch drill bit. This is this drill bit is not a screw tip or a brad tip drill bit. This is just a plain old uh, HSS high speed drill bit. Um, there's no fancy tip on the end. It's just a regular drill bit for, for drilling into steel. And the reason we use that is because uh, we need to back the, back the drill back out of the hole so that we have an accurate hole. And I'll explain that more to you as um, Scott moves forward in this process. Okay, Scott is going to drill his hole um, about an inch and a half to two inches deep on this side of the post. You can see that his drill bit is not square to this plate. And so you might wonder, how is he going to, by the time he gets to the other side of this U-bracket, you know, his bit is going to be far below that hole. Well, I'll show you, we'll show you real quick the, a trick that we discovered that uh, works every time. Uh, it doesn't matter that he's a little bit off because he's going to correct that in the next step. happens here is this this drill bit is going through this hole um, that drill bit wants to follow the past of path of least resistance so at the point where the end of that bit meets the hole from the other side it will naturally follow that hole and go on it will go right on out the other side let's watch that happen no we're off sometimes you got to go back to this side and, and, and try it again um, but uh, after two or three times um, you'll get it. I just want to run that back real quick and show you what what Scott did wrong here um, it's it's uh, easy to do uh, let's go back to when he drilled the first side over here um, you see how how uh, how long this uh, spiral part of this bit is um, what he did was he, he, he went in about four inches, which was about two inches too far. He should have just went in about an inch and a half, and then uh, he wouldn't have had any trouble meeting that uh, hole from the other side. Uh, let's, let's look at another video that shows kind of how to do it um, the right way. So. Okay, you can see here that Tim is uh, drilling... <clears throat> Okay, you can see here that Tim is drilling the uh, uh, first hole about in, about two inches deep on this side. First, he's going to do the bottom hole, and then the top hole. <coughs> then he's going to come to the other side and finish the hole through the other side. Notice that. 
Tim's drill bit is, is fairly square to the U-bracket. It's important to be able to hold that as square as possible. Um, if, you, if you don't have an accurate eyeball, as my, my grandpa would say, um, then, you, then you might need to use a uh, uh, speed square or a torpedo level to keep that drill bit as square as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it helps. Uh, now he's going to do the other hole, and you can see it will pop right through the other side. And you can see that the string is fairly perpendicular to the drill bit. And here comes the bit right on through the other side, just like it's supposed to. <clears throat> okay, at this point, uh, it's uh, all you got to do is grab a bolt and drive it through the post, uh, the hole that you drilled, and then put nuts on the other side, and you'll have uh, <clears throat> you'll have your post installed in the uh, in the bracket and you can continue on with the rest of your project um, if you like this video click the thumbs up and uh, um, make sure to like and subscribe and we will catch you on the next video have a great day thank you mm -hmm.